Aloha, beautiful people. Welcome to A Better World with Adrian. I am excited to lean into the final installment of the Ancient Elementals series, Earth, today. So I have been doing this four-part series on the elements, and it's been giving me life. It's been giving me life just to share, just to channel, just to, you know, serve through these portals and really share, okay, this is the way I think about the elements. This is the way I think about how they present in my life. This is how I live my life with them in ceremony. This is how I use them to create. This is how I do all the things to make magic as a spiritual soul in a human body deeply connected with the elements. And these are the codes. These ancient elementals are the codes that we get to create a better world with, right? So a better world, which is the whole point of this whole podcast, a better world is made when we do better, first of all, but it's not, you know, it's not using old paradigms. It's not improving old paradigms. It's like, hey, we're building a new paradigm with the ancient ways. It's like a return of the ancient ways. So new earth is actually ancient earth. It's actually old as fuck earth. It's like the original earth. So before we we mess it all up, <laughs> humans, humankind. So today is the fourth installment of the series. We had water, fire, air, and now we have earth. So I'm really excited to this. This episode is for you if you are super spiritual, if you're a creator, if you're committed and excited about building a better world. Like these are teachings, these are tools, these are things that can change your whole life, honestly. So let's dive in, shall we? Ah, here at A Better World, we always have an altar. So let us call upon the altar because guess what? Your life is an altar. And an altar is setting the stage for spirit to create magic, to create miracles. And so today we call in spirit with the altar and the altar is saying thank you. It's honoring. It's reverent. I have white roses. For a brand new, fresh slate. I tried to say slate and start at the same time and it came out slart. (laughs) And with my laughter, we have my inner child and the inner children of everyone on the altar. Remembering that it's play, that it's fun, that it's delight. We have all of the rose quartz crystals that I have in my possession representing unconditional love for yourself, for the whole world. I have an unscented white candle burning, bringing in the element of fire to purify the space, calling in all of our healed ancestors, guides. And on the altar, I have some sand. I have some sand, which is from the earth. It's from one of the most magical beaches here on Maui, and this is here to ground us. This is here to say thank you and anchor us in the earthly plane. Thank you, thank you, thank you, spirit. And now let us take our three deep breaths together to connect our mind, body, spirit. Shake off your body. Let anything you're holding on to go. Inhale through the nose. Exhale out the mouth. Be here now. Inhale through the nose. It's major flower energy, plant energy coming in. Feel your favorite plant. Hug you. Exhale out the mouth. Inhale through the nose. 
Holding at the top, holding in your third eye and bringing your intention into the space for this podcast, for the earth element, what you are intending to love, to receive, to learn, to connect, to grow, to heal, to expand, to level up. Exhale out the mouth. And if you close your eyes, gently blink open your eyes, arriving back in this day, this time, this space, this location, this podcast channel. Here we go, fam. Here we go. The ancient elementals, earth. So we did water, fire, and air, and now we're going earth. And the reason earth comes last, it's like something that I say so much because when we talk about a better world we're simultaneously talking about new earth and some people ask me a lot they're like what is new earth what is this new earth you're talking about and it's like it's heaven on earth it's literally creating the world we're proud of a better world one in love abundance like limitless lavish abundance connection joy harmony bliss like all of that and so if you're listening to this episode, whether you realize it or not, you have a role to play in creating this new earth. And I say time and time again, I say a new earth is birthed in me first. A new earth is birthed in me first. And so when we think about we're souls in human body suits, right? We're walking around. We got these body suits. Our humans have names. My human's name is Adrian. <laughs> and it's really the earth element. The reason it comes the last is because it also comes first. Like the alpha and the omega is like Earth is how we bring it all into form. Earth is how we make it real. Earth is literally the planet that we are allowed to live on, right? So when you think about it, like all of the other elements are things that happen on Earth, right? We got water. Yeah, we got oceans. You know, Earth is covered in the ocean. And I still believe, you know, the ocean is home. Water is home because our cells are water, right? And... At the very same time, it's like water happens on earth, air happens on earth, fire happens on earth. They all can't happen without earth. And the elements have these relationships with one another. And when we tap into all of them, especially using our personal astrology, especially using the astrology transits that are going on, that is when things really get magical. That is when things really start to pop off for you, for me, for all of us. So a new earth is birthed in me first. Like the earth element is how we crystallize things into the 3D. That's how we make them. That's how we build them. That's how we architect them. And so it's what makes us human. And so today's all about this earth element. It's like, we must make it real. We must make it real. Like water is super flowy. It's very mystical. It's very ethereal. Air is very dynamic as well. It's always moving. Okay. Fire even flickers, right? Earth doesn't really move. Okay. Unless it's a fucking earthquake which we did have two weeks ago here on Maui. And it's so interesting. I didn't feel it at all. And a bunch of people I know felt it, but I was also in the Eau Valley at the time. And I was, when I go into Eau, I definitely am connected with earth, but I'm really, I, I feel like I did like 10 breathwork journeys when I'm in there. I feel very lucid. I feel um, there's this thing we talk about in shamanism called trance, like you're in a trance state. Okay. I feel very in trance when I go to EL, like I don't even have to do anything really um, besides be there and be present to, to get into trance. And so I didn't feel this earthquake, but it's like, 
earth is not dynamic like the like the other signs are it's like I would say that fire and air are the most dynamic they're the most um active they're the most they move okay water moves but in a wide way and then earth is like yo I'm earth here I am and if the earth shakes that's when you know something's up. So this earthquake, it happened with, you know, Uranus was making a an important move that day. And it was like, wow, could this be more textbook astrology? Literally, Uranus, the planet of shock and upheaval, is making this move and we have an earthquake. And it wasn't like a small earthquake. It was like, a I don't know, a five point something People said their like stuff was falling off their counters, and I'm just like, huh. I didn't, I didn't feel that. I was in the, I was in the valley. <laughs> so this earth element, this earth element is what makes us human. It's the organic timeline, and something I speak about a lot. You know, whether you are new to this container, whether you're new to the container. I say container because this is a transmission. If you're new to a better world with Adrian or you've been coming back forever, like we're at a choice point in creating a better world where we're choosing between the organic and inorganic timelines, right? So that's why a lot of my clients and me, we've had a lot of cellular rememberings of the split between Lumeria and Atlantis, these previous civilizations um and lumeria was very based in the body based in based with mother earth and the heart center and then in atlantis it's not that they didn't have that however they got really power hungry with technology and started choosing the advancement over the human heart over the connection to earth and we see that again now with ai and so we really get to keep the ancient elemental of earth at the forefront. Like I said, it's the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. Without earth, we none of this is possible, right? And we all chose to be humans right now for this specific reason. So it's what makes us human. It's this organic, it's Gaia. Gaia is the land, it's mother earth. And so a lot of people, like something that one word that's coming through really, really, really strong for this transmission about the earth element is land, land in all these different ways, land, we must fully land in our human bodies and fully commit to our human lives, no matter how weird it gets on earth, no matter how challenging, no matter how painful, because you and I, all of us, in fact, are cut from source. That's unconditional love. That's that's pure source. That's oneness. And so when we experience what we're experiencing, like at the time of this recording, it's the end of February 2024, we are witnessing genocide on earth. And it can be really, really tempting to jump out of your human body, especially when you're a mystic and and you and you can do that some of my clients do it and they don't even realize they're doing it um you must fully land in your human body and commit all right that's what we were doing here that's what we're doing here and that's actually a huge block i see a lot of people making is like None of your medicine matters if you don't anchor it into the 3D, if you don't take action. And that's why my signature program is called 3D Moves, because it's like moves in the 3D plane, moves in the 3D plane. And so it's anchoring all these 5D visions, which is very like watery and airy. And fire is, you know, I've got the fire, I've got the passion to make it happen. And earth is like, boom, we build in. We stack in brick on brick on brick on brick. And one day I'm going to build an empire. It's like Rome wasn't built in a day, right? So new earth is surely not going to be built in in a day. We get to stack brick after brick after brick after brick after brick. And it starts with landing fully in our human body. Because if we're not fully landed in our human body, there's no way we're going to do anything else in this plane. 
right? So you must land fully in your human body. And it comes back to the word land. And so land, this is a gift. The land that you live on is a gift. You're a guest. You're allowed to live there. You're allowed to be on the land. You're allowed to eat from the land. Okay. So the Hawaiian word for land is aina. And one of my biggest assignments, biggest priorities since I got to Maui is, oh, it's two, two, two. Yay. New relationship with land. Can I get a hell yeah out there? <laughs> And yeah, like, as I'm saying this, I'm just like looking out my, I have a screen door that goes out to my lanai and, you know, I'm just looking at the earth and the Aina and she provides for us. She provides just like lavish, lavish abundance. Like literally I can go pick a lemon. I can go pick an avocado. Like I can go, somebody hit the beach yesterday, caught an eel and they were going to eat it for dinner. And it's like the land provides. However, we must be in right relationship with the land. And so many people, especially because of colonialism, and that's a big part of the history on this land that I live on now, is like you got to make offerings. You got to say thank you. You got to be in deep relationship with like, hey, I'm allowed to live here. And I say thank you to the earth and to the specific land I live on, right? And you, one thing you can do is really research what kind of land do you live on, all right? I was raised on Potawatomi land my whole life until now I live on Mu, I live on Maui, and so I'm, this is a whole new learning. But the biggest thing is just, it doesn't really matter what you say, it, it, you're not gonna like, if you come from a place of deep integrity and deep reverence and respect, you can't fuck it up. All right. Like you can make mistakes and like things you say, people might put you on blast, but it's like, okay, if you're willing to learn and you're willing to be human and you're willing to just be in it, if you come from a place of deep respect and learning and love with the land, and you just say like, hey, thank you. Thank you for letting me live here. Like, I love you. I appreciate you. I want to learn from you. And then just, just say, like, I say that every single day. I walk out and put my feet on the land. It's like pitch black and I can see the moon. I did it this morning. It was like 430. And I just breathe in through my nose. And I exhale and I imagine, you know, I'm barefoot on, on the land and it's so soft. Like the land is so soft. It depends on where you are, obviously, but, and I just say, thank you. I'm like, thank you so much. Thank you so much. This is a huge part of the ancient elemental of earth. And this is how we're going to stay grounded. This is how we're going to stay rooted no matter what, and live life from this, from this, you know, it's a different pace of life. It's a different pulse. I like the word pulse better than pace, but it's like, it's a different pulse of life. It's a different heartbeat to life is living with earth. And, and this idea of land, landing fully in our human bodies, the land we're allowed to live on and in the human form, right? So when we take it to astrology, it's Capricorn, Taurus, and Virgo are the three earth signs. Cardinal earth is Capricorn. Came here to lead in earthly, in the earthly plane, in earthly principles, okay? Taurus came here to sustain in the earthly plane, in earthly principles. And Virgo came here, it's mutable, right? To transform, to, to create change in the earthly plane, all right? With mother earth. And so... The earth element is very important to me. You know, it's important to all of us. And the more you learn about your chart, which if you want a reading with me, the link is in the show notes. I have spaces open in March. Like I, 
I love reading your chart to help you unlock these codes for you specifically. And of course, I do that with my long-term clients as well. Um, however, if you just don't know this stuff about your chart, a great place to start is a reading. So go book that if that's you. So these are all the earth elements and they're very important to me because I have a lot of earth placements, okay? First, I'm a Taurus rising. That means the cells of my body are literally fixed earth. That's why I love routine. That's why I'm stubborn, which I like to say committed. I like to say committed. And that's why it's such a, an immense part of who I be is because I'm a Taurus rising. It's fixed earth, fixed earth. Now, my dad is a triple Taurus. That's literally like he does not move. That's like triple mountain vibes. That's like, wow. <laughs> so that's fixed earth is my rising sign. Capricorn for me is my north node of destiny. And also I have Uranus and um, Neptune and Cap, which that's a generational thing. But my, my north node is in Capricorn. My destiny is to lead here on earth in the earthly principles, embodiments. And then Virgo, you all know this if you've been listening for a while. However, you may not. If you're new here, I'm a Virgo stellium. And a stellium means you have three or more planets in one part of your chart, okay? My Venus, Mercury, and Mars are all in Virgo. This is mutable Earth. So it's like, it's like the daily moves on earth that create change it's ritual it's devotion it's discipline so when we think about the expressions of earth it's like first we start with connection to mother earth we start with connection to gaia we start with connection to the item okay and then when we take it to the astrology and and we have okay we have uh cardinal earth we have fixed earth and we have mutable earth what does earth even mean in astrology? It's practical action. It's peacefulness. It's methodical. It's like air is the mind, right? Mind and breath. Water is very, very flowy too. It's like all of these things are like moving besides earth is like, I bring it down. I bring it down. I make it real. I bring it down. I make it real. So it's like, so many mystics avoid this. They don't want to do the discipline. They don't want to do habits. They don't want to take care of their physical health. Physical health is a very important part of the earth element, taking care of your human body. A lot of mystics, they, they talk about their energy body. They're not talking about their human body. And guess what? It stunts them in every single way. So it's the 3D realm. It's the daily actions. It's the, it's the 3D moves. It's the 3D moves, which is the term I coined for my signature program. It's the habits. It's, it's doing the things. Not in the metaphysical, it's doing them here. And so looking at these parts of your chart, you're going to get very key insights into how am I supposed to lead here on earth? in the tangible ways, tangible earth, you can touch it. You can touch earth, right? Can't really touch wind. You can touch fire, not for long. You can definitely touch water. Earth, you feel it. You feel it. It's like I'm holding this notebook right here with my notes on it. This is real. This is like, it's our, the earth element is our connection to this plane. All right. So it's like when you, when you think about manifestation, it's like the thing actually becomes real. That's earth. Before that, it's, you know, it's water, it's fire, it's air. When it becomes the earth element, that's when that shit's real. That's when the money drops into your bank account. That's when the person shows up. It's like you get that email and you're like, holy shit, that's the earth element. And so it's when I think about key themes of earth, it's like practical 3D realm, long-term planning, vision, like bringing things real here through discipline and all of that. And it's very tied to mountains. Like it's mountain energy. 
like climbing the mountain. It's all about gr being grounded. And what does ground mean? You're connected to the ground. You're not a floaty mystic, as I say. A floaty mystic is someone who's super ungrounded, has no boundaries, and doesn't follow through on what they say. Right? We cannot allow that. A better world will not be made by that kind of person. It'll be made by grounded, highly, highly skilled spiritual beings that are definitely super mystic and we dare to make it real. We don't just say things. We don't just visualize them. We make them. We make them real. Okay? So key words as well are safety and the umbilical cord to Gaia. So when I saw, um, I, I believe I've talked about this on the podcast before, but when I saw the most recent avatar called The Way of Water, it was about a year ago at this time. It was February, 2023. And I don't go to the movies. Like that's like not my vibe. If you know a bit of my story, it's like, I took a whole year off TV starting at my birthday in um, August of 2019, not knowing obviously that we were going to have a pandemic in 2020. So I did a whole entire year without TV and I realized I don't even care about TV. This is a waste of time. I could be building dreams. I could be learning. I could be podcasting. I could be doing a lot of other stuff that I, that I actually care about. So it was really a big shift in my life. But anyways, fast forward, I haven't owned a TV since. And of course, I watch movies and stuff sometimes, but it's like, I don't know, maybe quarterly. <laughs> I don't really care about it. It's just like, yeah, and, and it, it programs your subconscious mind as well. So it's. There's all the things. I was told to go see this movie, Avatar, and my guide said it so strong. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I guess like, I guess I'll go do it. Like they're telling me to go. And I remember my ticket was $33 and I was like, okay, <laughs> this is magical. <laughs> um, But they in that movie it really was an example of what spiritual warfare can look like and kind of it was a like prophetic a bit in what i believe is going to happen as we move forward in living new earth so if you haven't seen that avatar way of water um i'm not affiliated but they should uh they should reach out to me and we should partner um there's a scene where one of the main characters, one of the main avatars, she takes, she like plugs herself in underwater to the core of the earth and her whole body lights up and the whole earth lights up. And it's like, oh my gosh, the power and the expansion. And so I just imagine us being very, very, very deeply connected to the umbilical cord of Gaia, of earth. It's like, and this is our deepest safety. Like we think about it, like people say mother earth, right? A lot of people don't really think about what that really means. Like she is our mother. She is our mother. She is the matriarch of new earth. Cause it's literally her, her name's in the, in the damn title of what we're creating. <laughs> and it's allowing, it's like that mother's nurturing vibe. It's that, that, mother's milk it's very connected to cancer energy which is obviously not um earth but taurus is the empress and the tarot and it's like the empress and virgo is the priestess capricorn is the sea goat it is actually a goat that has a dolphin tail and when i heard that i about lost my freaking marbles because it's all about diving to the depths of the sea 
and then scaling the mountains with the wisdom you got in the sea. And that's, that's, I've never felt more seen <laughs> by anything than when I first heard that. I was like, oh, that's literally me. That's literally me. Oh my God. No wonder it's my North node. <laughs> so key themes and just ways of living and being in relationship with the earth element are like this mountain energy. It's like unshakable, unfuck with and just majestic connected to the majesty that is here on earth already that we get to co-create with and being grounded in it and feeling safe, like allowing yourself to feel safe because of mother earth. And it's so easy to not feel safe um it's so easy to not feel safe because I'm actually going to pause this my neighbor got a saw out <laughs> it's so easy to not feel safe on the earthly plane because there's human behavior that's not okay and it's harmful and there's real things that are happening that we should not bypass. We get to acknowledge them. And then at the very same time, like we get to remember, like we're on earth, we're on earth and she's our mother and she's here to take care of us. But here's the thing. We need earth. Mother earth doesn't need us. We need her. And here's the thing. She's been deeply mistreated. She's been ignored. That's why these ancient elementals are so important because it's like coming back to the truth of who we are, coming back to our roots. Like we are animals and spirits that get to live on earth. She's our home. Like when you think about people are like, I'm going to go home for the holidays. And what does that mean? It's like, oh, I'm going back to the place I'm from. I'm going back to where I grew up. I'm going home. I'm, you know, my parents are there. And it's like, who are our divine parents? The, the divine masculine and divine feminine, it's earth. And then people have their opinions about who the father is. Um, I, I feel that it's Saturn. Um, it's, it's really important to be connected to our mother. And that's where that umbilical cord comes in because it's like, so many people feel disconnected from their human mothers because of, you know, trauma and patterning and the nervous system and all of this stuff. And it's like, what's the mother that we can connect to no matter what, any day, any time that literally doesn't even speak that language of fear. It's mother earth. She's our real mother. Okay. Okay. And so allowing yourself to be connected to her and the core and the creation energy that's here on earth for all of us, for all of us. Okay. So now I'm going to get into, because this whole series is like, I'm teaching on these elements. I'm teaching you a different lens for life. I'm teaching, okay, my codes, my channel ideas, how you can apply this in your life. Now I want to make it very practical, which is very earthy. It's very Virgo is like, okay, how can you make your life a living ceremony with the land? How can you make a ritual where you're in divine right relationship with the land? Like how people are like, how, 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 how? Okay. Here's the thing. Here's how give thanks to the land, acknowledge the land every single day at a certain time and say, thank you. Thank you for letting me live here. Thank you for allowing this Thank you for all of the abundance. Like think about the food that we eat. Like most of it's from the earth. Like it might be processed. It might be, you know, tampered with by humans because that's what humans do is we tamper things and make them not as good as they were. <laughs> Give thanks to the land that you live on and the whole earth. Okay, an important practice is being barefoot on the land, being barefoot on earth. 
And a lot of this has to do with flowers and plants and trees as well, because it's, and, and rocks. I've been putting my face on rocks. I've been putting my third eye on trees. It's just like, it's a connection to earth because they're all here on earth, right? They're all here on earth. And with a deep intention of gratitude, connection, and clarity, remembering who you are, that you are literally part of Mother Earth. You are organic matter. And gardening is a huge thing you can do to connect to Mother Earth. Climbing mountains. Like holding dirt in your hands. It's all very simple. And I was interviewed by my friend, Riona, which you guys know her. She's been on the podcast. We did, um, we did a podcast about spiritual leadership. Uh, she interviewed me for her leadership summit. And, the, and she was like asking, was like, well, how do people connect with the land? And how do people do this? And how do people do that? And like, all of my answers are very simple. It's like, it's so simple. We've just forgotten. People are in the rat race. People are glued to their phone. This is a huge reason why I am so adamant about digital detox as a way of life is because when we're glued to our phones, we can't fucking remember these things. We lose touch with them, which when we lose touch with earth, we lose touch with ourselves because we are earth, okay? And this is such a deeply important thing for your own well-being and your creations and the well-being of our planet. Like our planet is hurting. Like if you think about earth, she is hurting. Like all of this weather is her crying out. All of this weather is her Kali rage. Like, oh my God, like what? Like I'm hurting. I'm not supposed to be this warm. I'm not supposed to have, you know, trash in my oceans. I'm not supposed to have all these chemicals all over me I'm hurting that's what she's saying and so just being in right relationship with her daily ceremony like saying thank you it's I think it's a lot it's a I definitely was doing it every day in Chicago but that you know that required a very deep choice that most people don't make especially in cities like I was riding my bike to the beach every single morning I was cold plunging you know every single morning I would you know my feet bare on the sand in 30 degree weather like it's definitely easier to be connected here on Maui but no matter where you are you can be connected to earth you could go on a really long snow walk and hug a tree. All right. Like, this is about ceremony and right relationship with it in your life. Hmm. This is earth. This is the earth element. Wow. This has been such a great, this has been such a great series. I'm so glad I did this. I'm so glad I leaned into this and... Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for you to receive this and, and walk this new way of life for yourself. Like this is very shamanic and my shaman name is White Earth Star. And what does that mean? You know, white represents the divine white light and the angelic realm and blessing I received when I almost died at 16. I went to the other side and I had a choice if I would come back or not. And I came back and I came back as an earth angel. And earth is the second thing in my shaman name, which means earth. I'm a bridge here on earth. And then star, it's white earth star, earth star. I'm a bridge between the earth and the stars. And so I'm not just, I'm not just like some astrologer. We're talking about like fantasy and like et and the cosmos and blah, blah 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 it's like no it's all very 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 practical for what we're doing here on earth there's a reason why all ancient rulers had astrologers and they were seen as like the elite guides and advisors and so 
this white earth star is my role here. And all of these episodes, the ancient elementals are really to anchor this as a way of life for you as a powerful creator of a better world. So I, I hope this served you. I would love to hear from you. What well landed, you can write a review. If you write a review, this really, really, really helps the podcast. So if you love this, if you love this podcast and you haven't written a review yet, like please give your time to do this. This would mean so much to me. And if you want to go deeper into this, like I work with my clients on all of this stuff. We go deep into these ways of living, being, creating, knowing, showing, all of the things. So this is how you can do so. I have one invitation and it's for one-on-one -on -one mentorship. I am really focusing on one-on-one -on -one mentorship. I'm really focusing on serving a few high-level clients. This really is where I'm being called. This is really where I'm being shown. And if you are this person, if you want to be in my world, if you want daily coaching with me, if you want personal breath work, personal astrology, like personal everything, if you want to come to Maui and do a dream day with me, go to the link in the show notes and apply. Like when you fill out the application, then I'll be in touch with you and we will figure out, okay, what is the correct container for you? What are the, all of the bells and whistles? Like I've been building custom packages with people and it's been really, really, really fulfilling. So if this is you, go to the link in the show notes. I can't wait to receive your application. And if aligned, we will connect more and get started for you changing your life and living in this pulse of life. This is the new earth way. This is the way for a better world. All right. I love you so much. I believe in you. Don't forget how amazing you are. Go make a stranger smile because that charges the whole field and you have no idea the positive ripple you can make, not only for them and others, but in yourself. Be a little bit kinder than you feel like you need to be. I love you so much. Go out there, be the change, be the light. And I will see you next time on A Better World with Adrian.